You are watching William Patterson University Television. Welcome back to the desk. The Pioneers are entering the heart of their season, and we've got some heart for the guys on the diamond. And here to break it down, we have Jimmy, Anthony, Andrew, and Steve. Now, Jimmy, the Pioneers had a big win against Keystone College last week, a 4-1 to victory, and that's going to give us a lot of momentum going into NJAC play, Jimmy. What would you see from that game? Absolutely key victory going into against Keystone, uh, into the NJAC play. We're going to take a look at the stats from that game. You know, Pioneers often accustomed to scoring a lot of runs in their games. This was a close scoring game, 4-1. to See Keystone 6-11. and record on the season four to one actually Pioneers actually got out hit but Keystone left a lot more guys on base you know capitalizing on runs in close games winning close ones not always blowing out your opponents those are wins that going down the stretch will really make a difference Steve yeah let's not forget during this Keystone game guys they scored in the eighth inning they were down until the eighth inning something you don't see from the Pioneers very often with the slugging that this team has so a huge win and great to see them be able to fight back late in a game to get the victory yeah it was a pitching duel it was a one to nothing going into the eighth inning, and the Pioneers fired off four runs in that inning. Anthony, what'd you see? Yeah, no, the Nears, I mean, as Steve said, they trailed they trailed one nothing going into the eighth inning, but then big RBIs, you know, from Lombardo, Carter, Habib, Hayward, kind of the big bats on this team really stepped up in that eighth inning. And also, something I take away from this, Ian Metzger, we're talking about later, he pitched great. And also, Darmani Rivas got the one and one third inning save, and it's great to see he's contributing out of the pen so far. If he can come back healthy and keep on doing what he's doing, he's going to be a big, big help for the Pioneers. Yeah, big help in that bullpen, too. Andrew? Yeah, it was a good come from behind win. I mean, uh, you know, down four, uh, down one in the eighth, four runs in the eighth. Uh, he mentioned before Darmani Rivas with the with the save, but something they're going to need to do. They're going to have to strike first in these end jack games. They're going to have to do that, and especially with Rowan coming up tomorrow, they're going to need to strike first. Yeah, we're going to talk about that a little later. But as you mentioned, Anthony Ian Metzger, he was a fan favorite. I think at the desk, we talked about him in 2020 before the COVID stricken season. Last year, dealt with a little bit of injuries, but came back strong towards the end of the season. He he's our ace right now, so. Talk us through Ian Metzger. He's been pitching well as we talked about that game. Yeah, my guy, Ian Metzger, I actually take a look at the stats right here. And he is, as you said, Samori. He's had a little, he's had a bit of a mixed bag. He's had two really good starts. And then he actually had a stretch of three straight starts where he allowed 15 runs in those three starts. He even's out to about a 4.24 year A. You see right here, he's 5-1 and one with a with 34 innings pitched, a 1.53 whip. And as he said, uh, one complete game to his name so far. Something I do want to take note of, though, his strikeout numbers are down. In those 34 innings, he only has 18 strikeouts. In 2020, before COVID, in those, in, he had eight, those 18 strikeouts in just 18 innings. So he's averaging about a strikeout per inning. Right now, he's averaging about a strikeout every two innings. So that's something to keep an eye on as we go forward. Jimmy? You know, my biggest takeaway from Metzger on this season is someone who used to play baseball. You know, you like to have pitchers who consistently throw strikes and strike people out. If you can have pitchers who are successful without racking up a lot of strikeouts, you know, the biggest key is not beating yourself. Don't walk players. Keep your team in the game. Some games you're going to have more strikeouts. Some games you're just going to keep a team in the game, throw some strikes, let your defenders make the plays. If you can have success in both realms, it's due for a lot of uh, great things from the Pioneers pitching staff. And I believe Metzger's season high in Ks this season is seven. I believe he had seven Ks a couple games back. But, a Andrew, he, you saw what he's doing, and he's doing a lot. He has to take the ball every five days. I think he's doing a good job so far, but what do you think he can improve on if he needs to? Yeah, I mean, like what, like we mentioned before, we've seen some shaky starts. We've seen some really good starts. I think when, you know, he's yeah, this Keystone game was good for him. Uh, it's going to hopefully put him back on, on the right track, especially with the Jack play coming up. I think if he can just, you know, you know, get the confidence building, he'll be fun this season. Steve, close us out. You saw Metzger come back last year from the injury. He comes back this year, like you said, 34 innings. And a big thing to point out here, 34 innings pitching, no balls over the fence off of Ian Metzger. So control is there. And seven innings of shutout ball versus Keystone is great, especially when NJAC play is coming up. Yeah, with NJAC play coming up, we're going to talk about them a little later. But we're going to take a step back, and we're going to have some fun on the WP block. I like this question a lot. So we are going to compare – couple of WP players, and we're going to compare them to the players in the MLB. Now, Andrew, we're going to start with you, and I'm very fascinated with you guys have to say with this one. But if you had to compare one of our players on the team to a player in the MLB, who would it be? So this guy on our team, Steve Yellen, right? He likes to crush baseballs, right? I think that's his job description. Yeah, yes. right? There's another catcher in the MLB that also likes to do that by the name of Salvador Perez. And this guy, Salvador Perez, last season, you know, he's played for the Royals his whole, his whole career. 48 home runs, 121 RBIs. Unfortunately, Steve Yellen, he's not putting up those numbers right now, but he's got five home runs to start the season and a slugging percentage of 844. That's absolutely nuts. I mean, and, you know, something Steve does even better than Salvi, strikeouts. Salvi last year had 170 on the season. Our guy Steve, he's only got one this season. I like the numbers. I like the number crunching, Andrew. I like it a lot. Steve? You know, the most important person on the field is the guy at first base who saves a lot of errors, and we have somebody just like that on our team, Carson Weiss, just like Ryan Zimmerman with the Washington Nationals, 
batting 348 this year, 18 RBIs. He's a leader on and off the field. He hits for contact, and when you need a big hit, he's there. And Carson Weiss is the Ryan Zimmerman of our team. I like, I like that a lot. Anthony? I went to a little bit of a deep dive with this question. I came out, I looked at, I'm going to take the other Weiss brother. I'm going to take Riley Weiss, and my comparison is Nathan Avaldi of the Boston Red Sox. And you look at the stats, he has a 3.76 ERA and 26 Ks. Nathan Avaldi last year, 3.75 ERA. And you look at it, both hard-throwing right-handed starting pitchers, and both stepped up when their co-ace went down. You know, Chris Sale for the Red Sox, Avaldi steps up. Darmani Rivas goes down, Weiss steps up. There's a lot of comparisons between these two arms. Jimmy, close this out. You know, I had a lot of fun with this one. Me and Anthony were talking about this. Evan Gaddis and Dan Carter. I mean, <laughs> fear the beard, guys. Like, come on now. I mean, look at him on the season. 379 batting average and a 986 OPS. The most intimidating guy in any team is a guy who goes with their short sleeves, no batting gloves, and just mashes a baseball. Dan Carter will give you that, and he can also help you in the bullpen, too. I'll Something that Evan Gaddis doesn't do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was in his job description. I don't have one up there, but I think Colin Lombardo is just like Marcus Simeon, a big power bat at, at the second base position. And... We are going to see Colin Lombardo. We're going to see all the Pioneers in action tomorrow as we play Rowan. Uh, a pre, we had them last year in the championship game, Steve. You are on the call for that game. What is it going to feel for the Pioneers? What's the feeling going to be? Because this is a big game, big NJAC matchup, first one for the Pioneers this yeah, year. You know, last year they go down the Rowan. They get swept in the NJAC championship. And now the series we've all been waiting for is coming this weekend. And we take a look at the numbers between the two teams. Rowan not only playing well all year round, but they're seventh in the country. So let's not let go let that fall. They won in eight innings against Penn State Harrisburg, who's under 500. And if you look at their record right now, 12 and four, 9.3 runs per game compared to the Pioneers, nine. On base percentage, the Pioneers have the upper hand right there, four to nine. ERA is where you kind of look at and the, your eyes get a little big. ERA for the Pioneers, 6.46 compared to Rowan's 3.83. And errors, Pioneers 34 errors compared to Rowan's 24 errors. And you go against a team like this, you're going to need to go back to the fundamentals and really start to play like you did last season against them. Jimmy? You know, the Pioneers, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago on the desk. When they get out ahead against their opponents, they're very successful. That was two years ago. This year, when they get the first run, First runs on the board against their opponents, they do very well. The errors, the high ERA, a lot of it goes back to Florida. They had a couple of really high, like 20 run games to inflate yeah, some that a little bit. Out there. Yeah, I don't, I don't worry about that too much. If you can just do the little things right against Rowan in baseball, play some small ball, that'll go a long way. Andrew, quickly. Yeah, I'm not so worried about our pitching, but you know, Rowan has phenomenal pitching. They have three guys with a sub, t a sub three ERA with over 10 innings pitched. I don't think that we're going to sweep tomorrow. I think we'll be able to have a seed and split with the profs, and, you know, I'm excited what happens with Jeff Albies. Anthony, very quickly. Yeah, uh, I mean, the Pioneers, you look at it, they were 0-4 against Rowan last year. Rowan gave them fix. They had eight losses. Four of them were against Rowan. We're not a math show, but math would tell you that's half the losses came against Rowan. I'm looking at uh, mainly uh, Eric Dom Dominico, who has an OPS well over one. If the Pioneers can keep him contained, they should be able to be good. Well, we hope for an explosive matchup tomorrow. It will be on Brave New Radio. I believe you two are going to be on the call. And, yep. me, and me and Andrew will be in the studio. So we're going to be rocking and rolling for that one. And we wish the best of luck to the Pioneers going into this weekend. And we're going to have a very special block coming up next as Justice and the rest of the crew will break down a special March Madness block. Oh, we can't wait for it. Don't, don't go anywhere here on WPTV.